Hello guys, we are now in strategy number 15. In today's video, we are going to learn the idea behind the two minor pieces versus a rook in the middle game and also in the end game. If you will learn in this very idea, I'm sure that your way of play in chess would really improve. And if your game will improve, your rating will increase. So, if you are interested to learn this strategy number 15, you can watch this video up to the end. And if you don't know these two minor pieces versus Rook, I'm sure that this would be a big help in your game of chess. But before I start the lecture, please don't forget to subscribe my channel, click like, and tap the notification bell in order for you to be notified in my future video uploads. So without much talking, let us all start and study this middle game strategy in this imbalance two minor pieces versus a rook. So here, in this example, white has two rooks while black has only one rook. But if we count their material, black has five pieces and white here has only four pieces. So that means there is an imbalance where white try to exchange the black's rook in exchange of two pieces. So, I want you to remember this box. Two minor pieces is better than a rook or even a rook plus a pawn. Although, materially, that two minor pieces will equal to six points. For example, the two bishops would equal six points versus a rook plus a pawn is also six points. But remember this, my friends. That minor pieces is very strong, especially in the middle game. Although materially they have the same value, they have both have six points. But you know, believe me, I already experienced that in my own game. Two minor pieces is very important in the middle game versus a rook and a pawn. Yes, because rooks could not come out in the opening or even in the middle game. Rooks are not so active, especially in the opening. And rook will only be active if there is only a transition from middle game to end game. Rooks are very strong, especially if the game is heading to an end game. That is why during the middle game, it is better to have two minor pieces than a rook. And also during the end game, if we compare which of the two is greatest, the two minor pieces or a rook and a pawn? Well, in the end game, that's a different story. You know, I will tell you that two minor pieces would become equal if the one bearing the two minor pieces has no pawns or even few of them. That is why two minor pieces are almost the same versus a rook and a pawn in the end game. So in this lesson, I am going to show you why this two minor pieces is very good or it's worth more than a rook and a pawn in the middle game. So here in this example, the strategy of the white pieces is to play some open files. He will try to make as many open files as possible because that is the important thing or the best way to do if you have rooks. So in order for this rook to become activated, he pushed the pawn here in a five. And now what is the reply of the black species here? He just simply play pushing the pawn to b6. What is the idea of playing b6? Well, that's very straightforward. This bishop in c8 must be activated or else that would be considered useless if that piece will not be developed. That's why in a strategy, you have to make sure that all of your pieces would be active. So the idea of moving upon b6 is to activate the bishop and also the bishop in f8 would support in c5, for example, if there is some exchanges. And of course, if you have two minor pieces versus a rook, it is okay for us to exchange peace because in the end game, that would be favorable for us. So as a continuation here, although white knows the idea of the black pieces, he also continue what he has planned. He captures the pawn, sticking to his previous plan by activating that rook in the F file. So here black recaptures the pawn and now white continue to play queen to E3. The purpose 
is to pressure the pawn in b6 and also if possible he can check the black's king in that diagonal so here the continuation is black only supports the pawn here in c6 because if white captures the pawn here in b6 then there is knight takes b6 if rook takes b6 then there is a nasty move bishop to c5 pinning the white's king and grabbing the white's queen if black captures that queen then there is queen takes e3 with check and after king to h1 there is bishop to d7 and in that idea two pieces versus three would mostly win the game so let's take it back in the position of course white will not do that because even after bishop takes knight takes and if there is queen takes we can still gain material by capturing the queen and after rook takes we have bishop to c5 forking his king and his rook and that position would be better for us so in this position instead of capturing the pawn white plays rook to c3 to attack the queen that defends the b6 pawn so here black instead of retreating he plays bishop to c5 so how many attackers to this bishop we have one two and three attackers to that dark squared bishop but in the black pieces in the black side how many are defenders of course if white have three pieces attacking then for the black side has also three pieces defending the pawn the queen and the knight that is why white go there in f7 activating his rook in the seventh rank that is one of the ideas that you should not forget place your rook in the seventh rank but here in this example i want you to take note and learn from the black side we should get the idea on how to win by playing the black pieces actually in this game black wins the game because of two minor pieces versus a rick that is why it's better to have two minor pieces in exchange of a rick so in this example instead of playing knight here to c5 and after rook to f7 this rook could not come out because of the blockade of this bishop in a fight that is why black decided to play bishop here in c5 for the purpose of mobilizing the black's rook in h8 so here rook to f7 seventh rank also one of the best idea in a strategy and now black just simply play bishop to a6 remember if you are playing chess always develop all your pieces as much as possible and that's what the black is doing here but now white has the idea of playing queen to g5 checking the black's king and also capturing the pawn in g7 and that's what he did before playing here queen to g5 he captures first the bishop here in c5 to stop any checking here in the white's king now what is the idea of the black's pieces here because we are learning from the black side we are going to flip the board here and i want you to focus on what to do if you are black here in your own opinion what would you do would you take the bishop with your knight or would you take the bishop with a pawn of course in a strategy it is always better to place all of your pawns toward the center that is what the black species here is doing pawn captures the bishop not the knight pawn toward the center and here the white queen moves to g5 to check the black king and also to capture the pawn in g7 although for him that is logical because the queen will go in the seventh rank penetrating in this rank but he doesn't consider that the two minor pieces is worth more than a rook so here king here in c8 what is the idea why not black go here in c7 because if black go here in c7 he cannot use his knight to jump either by capturing the pawn in e5 or maybe go there in b6 so black decided to play king here to c8 now white captures the pawn in g7 it seems that the position of the black species is scary and it seems that the white here is almost winning but actually in a strategy he is losing rook here in d8 defending more the knight so that the queen could make some moves without worrying the knight in d7 so white here logically for him captures the pawn in h7 and this time it's very evident that he has four pieces versus three and the one having minor pieces would always win the game like this and black now play pawn here in d4 actually he missed the chance of winning forcefully by playing queen here in a4 what's the idea his king is very exposed in that diagonal in the g1 square if for example rook here in f3 then there is queen to d4 check 
and after king for example in h1 then there is queen to a1 check he can't go back because of this bishop that is very strong now let's take it back of course he can't go in f1 because we have the bishop here in a6 guarding that square that is why for example he will play rook to f2 to avoid some checking here in d4 then we have queen takes a2 very sure that the position for the white species here is almost over but black didn't see that but instead he plays the move d4 now rook to g3 maybe to attack here in that file black rule his pawns to c4 and these two pawns are very powerful white would get difficulty in this kind of position the king in c8 is very safe while the white species have weak pawns how many pawn islands do he have of course he has four pawn islands this one one pawn island another pawn island another pawn island and another pawn island here so a total of one two three and four pawn islands and that is bad in a strategy always avoid as much pawn islands on the board the more pawn islands you have the more chances of losing your game so here rook to f1 look at that it seems that his pieces are now retreating because he is now afraid of the attack that the black will do here queen to c5 discovering check his king that's why white here play king to h1 and now queen takes pawn another pawn will join in the action and this time white realizes and regretted that he exchanged his minor pieces versus a rook so look at the position it's very strong for the black pieces here rook to g8 trying to exchange pieces but now it's only bishop to b7 joining in the attack targeting the white's king and now white exchanges rooks and here king takes d8 now queen to h4 check king to c7 and here rook to e1 to attack the queen of course that is defended by his white screen and here queen to g7 threatening checkmate here by capturing the g2 pawn and now queen to f2 to defend the pawn and here e5 this pawn is now joining the attack storming in the center and here whites play queen to e2 to attack the pawn in c4 but black just play bishop to c6 because if he captures forcefully the pawn in c4 then there is a checkmate in g2 that is why white continue to play a4 now c3 a5 e4 rook to d1 and now knight to c5 pressuring the d3 square by placing the pawn in d3 and later we can promote the pawn now a6 he also tried to promote of course we cannot capture because the queen is guarding that pawn so e3 exposing the g2 pawn and here queen to f1 and now knight to e6 planning to play knight to f4 and pressure the pawn in g2 and now rook to b1 maybe to play pawn to a7 and rook here in b8 letting the pawn be promoted but here black just simply play push the pawn to e2 if white captures the pawn there in a2 then there is knight to f4 pressuring putting pressure in g2 and that would be a very bad in his position that is why here instead of capturing the pawn white continued to play queen to f2 and still guarding the promoting square of the black's e2 pawn now queen to g4 defending the pawn in e2 queen to f7 check and here king to d6 king to f2 comebacks to prevent the pawn promotion and here king to c5 queen to g3 trying to exchange pieces so it's a good idea for the black pieces here although black will be happy that he let his queen be captured so black capture the queen and white spawn recaptures of course white here forced to exchange his queens because there is no way that he can save the game because he has now a very very bad position now black sacrifices pawn to d3 in order for this pawn to penetrate remember that rook cannot defend a promoting pawn if the pawn is already in the third rank how much more that the pawn of the black species here is already in the second rank white captures the pawn and here is c2 push rook to c1 king to d4 if he captures the pawn then this pawn will be promoted and now king to g1 to help defend from the promoting square and now after king to e3 he can no longer defend the promoting pawn and in this position white resigns so what would you do if you play chess always remember it is better for the two minor pieces 
against a lone rook even if that rook has a pawn even if that totaled six points well that two minor pieces has also six points also remember that the two bishops are worth more than the other pair of a two minor pieces like for example bishop in a knight the two bishop is better than a bishop in a knight i hope that you learned something from this lecture if you have questions piling up in your mind don't hesitate to ask questions in the comment section thank you so much i am jones chess your personal coach and your chess partner goodbye